All right, guys, so there you have it. It removed the majority, I would have to say 98% of the bluing of the places that I applied it anyway. What's going on, guys? Got this little project SKS that I purchased from a friend of mine who started a project on his own and then decided to sell it to me. So I'm picking up where he left off and I'm going to change pretty much everything about it. Uh, he had previously Duracoated this at home and ran out of the Duracoat mixture and just kind of let it go as it was. Um, I have already started on the bolt. As you can see, it is nice and shiny. I've done sanded all of that off. And I thought halfway in between that, you know what? You guys might want to follow along with this. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and start this project. We're going to change a lot of things about it. I probably won't stay with this stock due to the fact that it has some damage up front that is very unpleasant to the eye. I uh, may or may not go with a polymer stock. We'll see how that looks later on. What I'm going to initially do now is remove all of this Duracoat that's on here using a paint stripper. I'll be using some steel wool uh, to kind of rub that paint stripper in there and get that stuff off of here. Then I'm going to completely remove all of the bluing off of this right here. Uh, since this has already been modified, it really doesn't hold so much value as a collector's item anymore. So I'm going to be doing a lot of different things to it. We'll be removing it with this rust and blue remover right here by Birchwood Casey. I've already used their perma blue once. I redid an entire barrel with their super blue, which we will be using again on this project right here. Once I remove all the blue, I'm going to see how that looks underneath there because I have no idea. And then we may or may not do some sanding to it to re-blue the entire rifle barrel action, all that stuff. So this should be a pretty fun project. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, when using this paint stripper here, I'm going to go ahead and use two sets of gloves, one latex set and another more durable uh, pair of gloves that I could just throw away because I'm working with sharp components here. And of course, this paint stripper is just probably not the best stuff to have on your hands. Uh, basically what you do with this stuff, I'm just using your typical paint stripper that you can find pretty much anywhere. This is quick strip and you just liberally apply it to the entire surface of which you're trying to remove the paint from. And it really does a great job. I'm just putting this on here with a paintbrush. And then I'm going to go through with a metal wire brush and scrub into it after about 15 minutes of waiting. You can really see this stuff starting to do its job there as you see the paint is bubbling away from the, the metal. And any parts that are being stubborn with the paint removal, just uh, scrub that in and apply another coat of that paint stripper. Should do a really well, really good job of removing that paint from it. All right, I got this thing uh, sprayed off with water. Now that I've scrubbed off all of the existing paint, there's still some small areas in there that I will address whenever I sand it down, whenever I go to re-blue this thing. But for now, since I have sprayed it off with water, I'm going to heat gun this until it's all dry and go from there. All right, I got this thing all dried out by heating it up and now we can go ahead and start the blue remover or rust remover. This is basically a rust, a bluing for those of you who are not familiar. Bluing on a rifle is simply oxidization of the metal. This is actually rust. It's a very pretty looking rust. And so with that, we will be using this blue and rust remover right here by Birchwood Casey. I have not used this stuff yet, uh, but it looks like this little kit here, again, I bought this at Academy for about 15 bucks, and it looks like it comes with just about everything you would need for this entire process. Uh, got your sandpaper right here, it looks to be a, like a wet sandpaper, 400 grit, and you got some steel wool here which we'll be applying the rust remover with, and a little sponge right here, you got this uh, blue applier, applicator, applier, <laughs> uh, you got that there, and some other ingredients that you would need for this whole thing. So uh, this should be a fairly easy process from what I've read according to the directions on this uh, rust remover here. Basically just wipe it on, wipe it off. And it's supposed to act really fast. We're about to find out. I almost forgot. Let's just go ahead and do this the right way and start with the degreaser here that we were supposed to use. <laughs> supposed to use. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put this on to just a little rag here. Give it some loving. This stuff is pink. That's weird. And go ahead and rub it down onto this piece here that we're going to be sampling the blue remover on. I'll give you some close-ups here whenever I apply the blue remover so you guys can see just how well this thing works. All right, I got you zoomed in on the test piece here. And you can see the condition of it here. I'll give you a quick look at it. Again, I have not used this before, so 
I'm going to document this the best I can, and we will use this with uh, one of these little swabs here. I'm just going to soak it as per the directions. Alright, so what you're supposed to do is to wipe this onto the area and allow it to sit for like two minutes before you polish it away with the steel wool. So, I'm just going to liberally apply this onto here. Okay. If you can't tell already, it looks like that is doing its work real quick. And that stuff stinks! Holy crap! Open a window, light a match! I don't know, wait, don't light a match yet. That might not be good. Let's just let this thing sit here. We are looking at... Alright, two minutes. I'll give you a close-up here before I put another coat on. You can see how effective that was. That first coat and then the polishing with that fine steel wool. So let's just go ahead and apply another coat of that stuff and let it sit and see what how see if it attacks this stuff right here uh, any better than it did the first time. Okay, so it looks like that's about the best I'm gonna get out of this here with that second coat. Again, with this piece here, not too worried about that. Whatever is showing right now will be handled whenever I do my fine wet sanding on here to bring this to a really really nice uh, smooth finish to it and then apply the, the new blue to it. it's gonna look really good sitting on there so with the rest of this then seeing how all this works now I'll just go ahead and apply it to the rest of the rifle I'll zoom you guys back out so you can get a good look at this thing here this process and directions say to simply uh, wipe this off a little close up there that did a pretty good job let's just go ahead and attack the rest of the rifle Alright guys, so there you have it. It removed the majority, I would have to say 98% of the bluing of the places that I applied it anyway. There are some areas such as right there that I'll have to touch up and whatnot. But that is not a big deal to me because I actually again plan on sanding this uh, down to remove a lot of the machine marks that are on there. Uh, I'm going to really try to get this down to a very nice blued finish. And of course that involves really good prep work. So again, sand, sanding this down to a very smooth finish and getting rid of all those nicks and stuff like that, um, gonna have to be applying a lot of sandpaper anyway. So not too worried about it, but very effective in removing the blue as you can see right here. Uh, it worked out very well. Again, it's only small areas like that. And my prep work in removing this really wasn't all the greatest anyway. I actually still had a few pieces of paint still left on there, possibly right there. Uh, but again, going to be sanding it anyway. So, But as far as the bluing works, not bad. Very minimal elbow grease involved with removing the rest of the bluing with the steel wool. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and end it right there. I'm going to split this project up into a few different videos because it's going to get rather long if I don't. I have a couple questions for you guys though. Uh, some of you guys might not like to hear this, but I'm really considering taking off these lugs and then also sanding this down to a completely bright metal finish and then applying the super blue to it to give this a really brand new modernized SKS look to it. Uh, let me know your thoughts on that. I know some of you guys are going to be like, Dude, don't Bubba the SKS! I don't really think it's really bubba -ing it. I think it's more of long, you know, bringing it into the modern age. So, won't be having a bayonet on there anyway, as I don't like the, the weight up front. This isn't that kind of SKS as a collector item. This is going to be more for having fun at the range and a possible hunting style rifle. So, really considering deleting this right here and then bluing that with the blue process. But let me know what you guys think. Be sure to check back for the following video where we will be applying the super blue to this SKS. I'm really excited to see how this is going to turn out. I had really good luck with this on my Remington 1100 project. So check that out. I have that link down there in the description box down below for that project. Appreciate you guys watching. If you enjoy this, feel free to hit that like button and share it with your anti bubba ing SKS. SKS friends out there. Let them know that I got a project like this going on and bring me their hate. Helps my video when they post comments anyway. So I'll catch you guys on the next one.